Welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor. I'm Gary Tucker and we're starting a new series today where we're working in plein air. And what that means is uh, because the summer weather has come about, we're able to go outside and paint our subject. Today our group, our Saturday morning group, is on location at Pierce Park in East Boston. It's a wonderful park um, overlooking Boston Harbor and we're there in the morning so um, we're going to do a painting based on what we see. Now we're at some distance to our motif and as I'm sketching it I realize that uh, the composition that I would like is one where we zoom in we zoom into the subject to get closer to the buildings, um, make the boats a little larger. In essence, we create our composition by zooming in. And I've done that on my paper, and I'm uh, now going to start to add color to that. Again, when we're on location, there's, there's a lot of things that are different than when we're in the studio. One of the big things and this takes some time to get used to is that there's no frame around nature we have to forge a composition on the paper taking from what we see in front of us and thinking about what we want to express or want to say through our painting and deriving a composition that's going to help us to do that that's going to be in line with what we want to say so one of the exercises that I engage in and one that I encourage my students to do is to um, give yourself a title before you start your painting. And in this case, my title was Morning Light on Boston Harbor. A simple title, and there's, there's a lot of images that could come out of such a title. However, uh, this helped me to select from everything that was in front of me, select a small portion and to edit that selection to fit my idea. Uh, this is another challenge that we have when we're working out of doors is to um, edit or to um, refine our idea so that we're not including every little detail or every little piece of what's in front of us. Uh, in our painting and this you know when I'm saying this I realize this is almost common sense but one of the habits that we have we learn it in art school or we learn it uh, from study is that we're constantly looking up and measuring our painting against the subject adjusting it to represent our subject exactly and I find that this uh, becomes counterproductive this constant looking up and um, measuring your subject. So when I have, when I've selected the title and decided on what it is I want to say through my painting, I feel that I am able to uh, refine the image, be more selective about what I include, and also it helps me to uh, decide what to exaggerate, what to minimize and this sort of thing. So you can see right now in the painting I'm improvising a bit. The shadows that I'm placing were not visible uh, in the photograph or even in real life. I'm constructing these because number one they help me to show off the regatta to make the regatta a little more obvious. Number two they help me to describe a early morning light on the buildings. Uh, the combination of the pale blue and pale ochres and oranges that I was placing on the buildings in the beginning is giving me the lighted areas and these shadows in between buildings and coming down uh, in angles off of the buildings are making the strength of the light and the angle of the light more obvious. And it was a bit of an improvisation. I wanted to yeah, make the boats a little more visible and also to describe the light. So 
Um, they are a bit of an um, improvisation. This is um, not always an obvious thing to do. And in fact, in the, f the first iteration that I did, it came out a little differently. So this is a, a second go. But I discovered along the way that I could do this, and it's going to look very natural. Uh, also, when we're working in nature, we once we find a subject, uh, we usually set up our gear to face the subject and uh, and then start to work. Uh, before we start working, it's a good idea to think about, and this is after you've kind of decided on a title and started to place a composition, uh, we need to think about a watercolor plan. In other words, how do we, how are we going to paint our subject? And one of the things a watercolorist has to be aware of is, you know, the, the quality of the air. Is it a dry day? Is it a damp day? These, these factors will um, make the painting aspect a little more difficult, a little more challenging. Experience, of course, is a great teacher, and the more you get outside, the more you'll know uh, what to do in each sort of situation. Today's a very dry day and a very windy day, so uh, the painting is going to dry very fast. That means uh, we can do this layered approach with a little more ease. By layered approach, I mean adding um, deeper colors to a painting that's dried off. Um, but on a rainy day or a very humid day, that would be very difficult because the paper would be drying so slowly as to make it almost uh, impossible to add a second layer, in which case we would do a painting more in an a la prima style or in the first go from top down, something like that. And I'm sure we'll have occasion to do that uh, this summer. Anyway, today's weather is different, a bright, bright, sunny morning, beautiful, high contrasts in the buildings and on the water uh, give us an opportunity to do more of a uh, building up approach, a layered approach. So it does make sense uh, to sort of conceive a watercolor plan before you even start. And I, I think of it in stages. The first stage, of you, as you've seen, was placing uh, the light hues, a light hue on the building, a very pale sky, and some of the lighter hues in the water with the knowledge that I'm going to return and start to place darker hues uh, in the shadows, around the boats, in the water to accentuate the waves, etc. And uh, was able to do this painting rather quickly because of that. Also, I could take advantage of some dry brush, which you see in the upper parts of the buildings or in the water itself. So deciding on a watercolor plan, deciding on a, a title or a sort of message to help you edit your image, all this happens before you even touch the brush to the paper. So this sort of preparation really helps you, helps the artist to work outside with... Uh, a certain direction, a certain amount of confidence, and at least an idea of what you want to do at each stage. And uh, from there, it's a matter of execution. So I in the habit of of making this sort of plan, making this sort these sorts of decisions before even mixing up the first color, then I turn my mind off and I focus on what's going on on the paper. This second image that you see was done after the fact, after doing the, the longer painting, as sort of an improvisation uh, based on what I see using one color. Again, I'm describing Boston Harbor and the skyscrapers, but I felt more at ease uh, after kind of struggling with the first painting. I felt I should do something quick and spontaneous, taking what I learned from the subject and essentializing it, and that's what I've done in this uh, tonal study. And it's not a bad way to finish a session outside is to do something rather quick and spontaneous 
Um, sometimes you'll get an idea as you finish the first painting of what you can do in the second painting. That was the case here and I had an idea to describe this scene with more of a dry brush approach and create a sort of shimmer. Um, a description of the the skyscrapers but not to the point where we see each window more we we perceive the the height of the skyscrapers and uh, the shadows again they work to define uh, the sails of the regatta and the lower part so some tips for working outside uh, with watercolor um, a plan a watercolor plan a thought towards what you want to say and then paint away. You can find a, a, a short uh, tutorial on this painting. Uh, if you go to the description and find a link to a PDF that's on my website, you can also follow me on Instagram and uh, have a look at my website. You'll see this and other similar images as well as tutorials. Thank you.